if I understand rightly, your first big blockbuster film was actually when you were pretty young, and that was uh, the first of the new Star Wars trilogy. It was, when We're, I was 12, yeah. Tell me about that experience. Well, um, I, I didn't know what I was going up for. At that point, the year before we actually filmed it, they, they were seeing, I think, every kid everywhere. Um, and we were all told that we were going up for the young Princess Leia or Luke Skywalker. So I went in for that. And, and then I was actually working on something else, which was sort of a, a TV thing called Coming Home, which was the first proper part I've ever played. And I got this phone call saying, you've got a part in Star Wars, you've got a part, you've just got to come. But they wouldn't tell me what the part was. So I, I went down there and and suddenly realized that actually I didn't really have a part. I was being Natalie Portman's stand-in because we looked the same and I was, tw <laughs> you know, it was the same age and everything. And I couldn't figure out where, what the part, what, what was going on at all. Um, and then eventually they sort of came up with this idea because we did look so similar that there was this sort of decoy queen. But again, I mean, it was one of these Hollywood things where nobody actually got any script pages. So I had no idea what I, what I was meant to be doing. <laughs> I gather that you actually felt a bit of the, the magic of Star Wars that had been with you from watching the first movies. You, did, you weren't feeling that as you were filming that. Well, no, it was all green screen, and, and you find out that lightsabers aren't real, and, and, <laughs> you know, and I had no idea what was going on. Um, we really, everybody really enjoyed marching around with a da 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 <laughs> which I think everyone got told off for because the sound people obviously didn't like it that we were singing the theme tune the entire time. But. <laughs> Tell me about the, the next film that you made, which, which was Love Actually. Um, I, I hope that was as happy experience to shoot as it was experience. to watch. It was a very, very lovely experience. Um, I wasn't on it for very long, uh, but it was with Andrew Lincoln, who is a wonderful actor, and Chiwetel Ejiofor, who is a, a glorious, glorious actor and a very lovely man. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, I, I'm, I, I think getting the opportunity to be in a, in a um, Richard Curtis film being English is, is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> no, so it was great. Uh, I mean, that, that business of actually not having a, a huge part in the film, that, that presumably was quite an interesting experience in itself in that, that you, you didn't get a chance to sort of shape your character with the other actors in, no. in the way that you would if, uh, in, normally. I do remember having the read-through for that uh, because suddenly the entire cast was there. And I think I was 17 when I did that. And I remember being so utterly mortified because I'm crap in a read through on a good day. <laughs> and um, and I, ju I, I actually left, I sprinted out of there and burst into tears. So it was one of the most, it, I'm probably, I, I'm sure I wasn't that bad, I'm sure I got the lines out, but that kind of thing of having that many incredibly famous actors around um, did totally uh, annihilate me on that first read through. Um, but it was amazing, you know, it was an amazing thing because it was basically a load of shorts that are put together. So I, th I don't think anybody that was in it knew what the whole thing would look like at all. So it was, it was fascinating. 